Thank you, everybody in the audience, for uh, this is the last case study and uh, being there. I am Ritujit Majumdar. I am originally from India. I have been around in Japan for the last one year, and it has been wonderful learning experience as well as something that I can contribute to. So the title is Supporting Evidence-Based Teaching Learning Practices with Technology. That also happens to be the overall theme of this symposium. And we have all seen these sets of uh, tools and platform that we are building. We have the LMS, we have book roll, we have uh, our record store, and then we have the dashboard, which uh, has quite a lot of uh, models which are embedded in it. But the question is, how do we extract good teaching learning practices by using all this infrastructure that is being built? So that is something that we are trying to move towards. Uh, we have the data plane. We are collecting quite a lot of uh, learning logs. We have the analytics plane. We are building models about those learning log data. But then how do we go to extracting evidence from utilizing such learning logs? So there comes our whole infrastructure, which we call as learning, uh, learning evidence analytics framework. It's LEAF. Uh, the the logo came up very interestingly. It is it is the small maple leaf which is very famous in Kyoto, and it also says that uh, there are there are different kinds of students who can be in the same class. Some of them not struggling, but some of them are very motivated. And how do we try to extract how to support each of those kind of students? That is one of the objectives and motivation that uh, gives us uh, leads us to this evidence based framework. How to do that? While we try to develop the technology, we first give a process model. We call it the DAPER model. It starts with data collection. As we know, quite a lot of data is automatically collected in our system. With that data, we can analyze using the uh, dashboard that we have built. What we mean by analysis, for example, is how much is a student reading a particular uh, slide, which Brendan had also introduced. Now we see that if most of the students are reading, uh, are skipping the content, that means that they need to be reminded that, hey, you are going too fast, or you, are, you have skipped most of the content. Why don't you take some more time and read it? And we have got widgets within, built within the system, like sending emails to the students who are below the uh, average reading time, and that directly, our al the algorithms that are being developed, you can select a group of students who are at risk of skipping the content and send emails to them as a notification. Hey, why don't you spend some more time on this? While doing that, the teacher can monitor by using the same dashboard. But then the next set of things comes that how can we keep a record of this whole set? That what was the problem? The problem was there was low engagement. And what are the indicators for that? What did the instructor try to see in the dashboard, which indicated that there was a problem? Then what did the instructor do to solve that problem? In this case, sending an email. And then what was the result? How many people who got the email went back and tried to complete the material that was supposed to be read? So to build that, that is the infrastructure that we are trying to build going beyond. So I'm saying that there is this existing LA infrastructure which has the LMS and various kinds of tools that can be linked to the LMS through the LTI support. And then we have a dashboard where we can visualize many of the indicators that are there and build quite a lot of models with respect to learner model, content model, knowledge model, and utilize them. For example, what Ivitska talked about, talked about uh, for group formation. But this is something, this is the new part that we are working on, to extract evidences in, the terms, in terms of teaching learning cases. So if we can extract how a specific instructor or a specific uh, learner was interacting with this whole system and keep a record of that for further analysis. That is the objective of it. So I, I will take a step back and say, traditionally, evidence-based education is more from a point of view of uh, uh, statistical analysis, of meta-analysis of literature. That is, uh, from the uh, research articles, you extract what worked, what kind of in in uh, interventions worked. 
But in this era of big data, we have this whole uh, set of teaching learning logs. We can utilize that to extract the good practices in education. And that's what we are trying to move towards. And we have built a, a system. It is right now under development, but we have built the initial system, which we are calling as evidence portal. What it gives is a set of uh, information about the context. The context is the longest set of information. In what context is this happening? Is it in a specific uh, course with a specific content, with a classroom size, at what level, which university, when is the course there, is it during the fall semester or the spring semester, which country. We have a log of that. Some of them can be automatically generated from the LMS, the learning management system. Rest, the uh, system gives uh, users capab capability to input those information. With that, in that context, what is the problem that we are facing? For example, a problem can be that students are has low engagement. Now, if this is the problem, we also want to see what is the indicator of that problem. So indicators, in our case, is the graph which a teacher might look in the dashboard. And for example, a low engagement indicator can be that reading completion is low. And we have a very simple slider-based thing where you can set the criteria. If it is less than 20% of the material, then the student is not doing that good. And such kind of indicators of the problem is also a knowledge which is currently very implicit to the teacher. We do not have it now. But the system is something which, which we want to support and get that knowledge in a more explicit way. With the indicators, we have solutions. The solution, some of them can be automatically logged. For example, if the email was sent, the system can uh, say that when the uh, threshold was low, 80% of the student did not complete, we sent an email. And that is logged as a solution. But what is interesting is every teacher wants to know that what is the result? What is the result? Was there any change in behavior? So they can say a review period. And after one week, the system can collect the result. How many of the students who were sent that, uh, sent that email actually then came back and completed the, uh, completed the reading um, material, that, the reading assignment that was there? And this part is the result. It can also be the same solution can have different results for different groups of people. So a person who is high achiever, for example, might have a different set of results for the same intervention, but the system again gives the cap capability to collect different kinds of results. Along with it, there is a lot of other developmental uh, work which is involved. For example, what is the standardized way of logging this whole data? Because we want to uh, build a whole new standard. So we are using XAPI statement, which is a standard for logging le teaching and learning interactions. We are doing that and trying to see that these cases, the teaching learning cases, how can we standardize and log the detailed description of it? The system is being built. And we are also trying to outreach it to different, uh, different communities. What we did was we did an instructor's workshop in India where uh, around 500 instructors were told about this system. And they came to a face-to-face -face workshop. We also did, uh, that was last December, uh, and we also did a recent workshop with researchers in Arizona uh, last month. Yeah, And what we have is we are going towards educational big data beyond borders. Uh, Japan ha has started it. Taiwan, we also already saw uh, interesting case studies from Taiwan. India, it's being uh, introduced in India, and various uh, grassroots level colleges uh, have uh, adopted it and currently we are supporting that system and uh, 71 instructors they have started using the system from this January and 14 courses are running right now on that platform. Turkey also uh, is uh, one institute in Turkey is also uh, starting to use the system and Mexico is also in the plan coming soon. So I will make a pause and say that what is our, our research objective, at least my research objective, is to give all this system to the teachers and try to see that how can a teacher become 
are reflective practitioners. How do they utilize this uh, technology affordances and become reflective practitioners on their own? But our primary, uh, one of the other most important stakeholder is the learners. So in this data-driven age, how can we support learners? Learners, and we have heard this keywords a couple of times, that we want to make them more self-directed. They, they should take initiative of doing the plan, making their own goals, monitoring it, and then reflecting how did they do it. So this is also a part of the 21st century, uh, 21st century skills that a new age learner needs to learn. And we identified four uh, key things. One is problem solving, and the learner should have uh, data literacy, and the learner sh should have self-direction, and they should have health literacy. So at this point of time, I want to ask how many of you are using some kind of physical activity tracking device? Like a watch. OK. Interestingly, we did a pilot study with Kyoto University student. Quite a lot of them are having a watch, or they keep track of their things uh, while, while on the mobile phone. They're enthused about it. But right now, health data and learning data are in separate silos. We want to provide one platform where they can be set together for the learners. And here, data becomes a context for them to plan, monitor, and reflect. So I again go back to this. Uh, so what we did was we actually built a system for that. We have, a, a, we call it a goal-oriented active learner, so that we can know that that learner is active, they're physically active, as well as they're goal-oriented towards their learning. And we built a whole infrastructure for that, which is also integrated to our learning analytics infrastructure. That means that the data is anonymized, that the data is only used to build the models, and then again it gets back to the learner in a very personalized way. It is not, it is not being used with an identifier uh, attached to it, which is good, because many researchers want to do uh, data-based uh, research, but having an infrastructure is an advantage that we have right now. This is an example. For example, the learner can uh, take uh, uh, activities, they can do uh, a physical activities or they can do an ebook reading. Based on that, they can identify what is the problem that they have. For example, if uh, I, I collect my weight data and I know that the system will support me to see what is my BMI. If the BMI is too high, then maybe I am not doing that good. And then based on that, I can plan and then monitor my plan. The system will say whether you are on track or off track and then reflect on it. There are many scope of future work in both of these two strands of research. One is how do we apply this evidence in practice? Uh, how do we design algorithms to automatically validate it? How to find similarities in evidences and automatically recommend it to another uh, teacher? Studying scopes of uh, adaptation across boundaries and also in one uh, across schools or universities. And uh, the last part that I talked about in understanding data-informed decision-making strategies in learner, we want to focus on each phase of the DAPR model and see how learning is happening or how are, what is the process in which they are getting there. At the end of it, I would just like to show one picture. This is the first book I read in Japanese and the only book I read in Japanese. And, <laughs> I think this is, this is also something very inspiring, and I'm really lucky to work with uh, great um, uh, students in the lab, uh, Lee and Young. Thank you very much.